Well, bowling fans are back. Badger Bowling Madison's the site, the 2015 Masked Badger Open. Joining me today, Joe Serrar. Joe, it's been a pretty busy summer for you at Bowlers Pro Shop. Busy getting these bowlers back into the fall swing. These bowlers that are out here today are not starting their fall off very slow at all, bowling on a very competitive lane pattern, and there's not a lot of strikes to be had out there. Well, thanks for welcoming me back, and uh, you are right. The lane pattern is playing quite a bit flatter than some of the patterns we've telecast in the past. Yeah, there's going to be some tough matches out there. We've got one very familiar face with Kyle Anderson, the human pretzel out there, is one of our qualifiers. Three other bowlers fighting for that title, and Joey and I will be back from Badger Bowl in just a moment with that opening semifinal. Make sure you stay tuned. Barbiere's Italian Inn, featured in onmilwaukee.com's In Search of the Perfect Pizza in January 2013. Near Miller Park on Blue Mound Road and on Milwaukee Avenue in South Milwaukee. First semifinal here from Badger Bowl in Madison, 2015 Mast Badger Open. Mast, of course, standing for Madison Area Scratch Tour. And a familiar face here, Joey, starting things off on lane four. He is a familiar face with a very familiar game, at least to us and many of our viewers. Now, this is the eighth consecutive season that Kyle Anderson has made television show made his first TV show when he was 16 now just turned 23 and you can see why over the years the number of strikes he's thrown on TV uh, has to be in the hundreds Joey yeah and it almost looks as though that ball may be a urethane in his hand due to the slow smooth motion it has down lane as we can see yeah, still we, finished right behind the five pin yeah we did see some players go to either super tame equipment like Kyle bowlers that had hand or bowlers like Dale Geitz here uh, also pulling off the left side, something pretty tame, but something with a little more surface, even if it's in the resin. Dale, a little less rev, a little more ball speed, and a big break there to get the squasher. The old Jersey squasher. <laughs> all tied up at a strike piece. Once again, I want to thank you, Joey, for all your support going into our ninth season here on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel, and you've supported us all nine years. Glad to have you on board again it's this season. How young we've stayed in those nine years. We haven't aged one bit. Oh, uh, I was looking at the first show we did at Time for Time Warner Cable Sports Channel the other day, and uh, we're a lot more relaxed now than we were back in the day. <laughs> we're a little stiff on that first show, and nothing stiff about that strike for Dale. Shot from Dale, yeah, that was a, a quality shot. You can see his forward roll, which on this type of pattern should work to his advantage as opposed to somebody with a lot of side turn. Yeah, 43 foot pattern, it's very similar to the USBC Nationals singles and doubles pattern from 2015. Boy, if Matt McNeil was here, I'm sure he would have had a field day like these two lefties. Yeah, he'd be in the finals for sure. Watch that first step go airborne. And then he gets into his patented pretzel approach. <laughs> 4-7 left at the end of the lane. Scores very low today, as you can see with Kyle's winning scores on his match play road to the finals. Cody Rams in a bowl we've seen a few times here on our telecast. And Chris Pearson as well. Chris trying to play a different part of the lane. He's trying to play very far outside, and depending on what pair he hit, he either had everything or nothing. And unfortunately for Chris Pearson in that semifinal match, or that round of eight match, he had nothing. And Chris, we know, very talented player. Very talented, but when, when the gutter is playing, players can have the world, and when it's not, uh, it seems as though there's one board to hit. And as good as he is, Chris Pearson, not many can hit one board shot after shot. No. And the scores overall for this tournament, very low. For four games of qualifying, only two bowlers averaged over 200 out of a 61 bowler field. So you can tell how tough and how flat this pattern is playing for the players. And a little bit of a week seven there for Kyle. He took a little more of the scenic route on that shot. Yeah, yeah it, it seems as though any type of 200 game could ensure you a victory. But with a flatter pattern, that's typically what it takes. And it takes great spur shooting, which we know Kyle, one of the best. And Kyle rarely leaves an open frame on the scoreboard. Kyle just under that 200 average for the day. It took a 193 average to make the top 16. So out of a 61 bowler field. And there's a lot of strong bowlers that come in from all over central, eastern Wisconsin, northern Illinois that make up these mass area scratch tour fields. You know, and years ago on Facebook, I, I saw someone mention uh, MAST. It stands for must all with strike. <laughs> but we know with this tournament, the scores being where they are, that is not the case. Yeah, they, as, and that's two players now, 
both Kyle and Dale that have come high on the left lane. Yeah, you can see there a little break for Dale in that opening round against Jack Sullivan. Only took 158 to win that round of 16 match. And then Jim Schrader out of Waukesha only threw 160, and that let Dale get good by with a 174. Right, so Dale will have to make some type of an adjustment on the left lane. He's had back to back high shots on that lane. And we know he will. Yeah. Dale, is he, he's had some great series over there. He's been the Wisconsin Dells Bowling Association Bowl of the Year for a couple of years. And we know he can make the adjustments on the lane to make things happen. And you can see right there, already making a little bit of an adjustment with the feet, moves slightly to the right, even on lane four. Keeps that right or left foot back. Keeps the shoulders open a little bit toward the approach. That was a great shot. Kind of a blower 10 thing. Yeah, that was just a really bad break. Five acted a little weird going towards the 10. Let's see if it went behind it or in front of it here on the or, replay. Or if it collided with another pin uh, right, behind right behind it. So, I mean, that's a strong finishing ball when you throw the five behind the 10 in, in lieu of throwing it into the 10. You just got to move on, cover up that 10 pin, keep that match close. It's only down by four pins to Kyle Anderson right now. Kyle keeping it clean through his first three frames, but we know Kyle's looking to strike out there. Right, and, and Kyle should be a good example to those at home who may not have a picture-perfect approach. It's all about repetition. We'll watch Kyle's first step go upward, and then he gets into his normal footwork. Kind of comes up a little bit at the line, but he executes so well, shot after shot after shot. I mean, his let's say oddities in his approach have no ill effect. Yeah, the only thing that's concerned me over the years is how he finishes with his foot at the foul line. He slides kind of parallel to the foul line with the right. turn, but he says he has no knee or knee or ankle problems, so no reason to change the physical part of his game. Keeps himself in shape, exercises right. daily. and But he does have youth going for him. Yeah. and. Uh, his youth is a good thing. Yeah, as 20, as only being 23 years old, even though he's got quite a few years of experience of high caliber competition on the lanes. But we're seeing that in many other major sporting events, uh, golf, baseball, some of the best players out there are in their young 20s. And as they approach 30, you can start seeing some decline in performance. Well, even now on the Pro Tour, you got some of the guys out there as Kyle goes very wide, which, leaves a washout. Which you can't do with the urethane. That, that's the, the reason many players tend to migrate toward reactive resin. You can miss two or three boards left or right of your target and bring it back. Whereas urethane, it's not coming back. You see the youth movement with players like Kyle Anderson. Of course, we've got A.J. Johnson, who's made many of our telecasts, part of Team Fish on the PBA Tour, along with Kyle Troop and Connor Pickford and a lot of young players that are really making their mark and winning titles on the PBA National Tour. Sean Maldonado just wrapped up his fourth consecutive PBA regional win in the Southwest region, and Sean's not even 25 years old. Right, so, I mean, they're all on the same team? Uh, they, well, Team Fish is a little bit of a concept of some of the guys get together and how they call a fish in poker is somebody that's not a good poker player. Team Fish, they look for, you no, know, they build action against bowlers that might not be as good. They're looking for fish out there. Uh, so, and uh, unfortunately right now, Modern Dale Getz. Modern day Count Gengler? Modern day Count Gengler, yeah. And unfortunately for Dale Getz, uh, he's fishing, looking to get to the pocket on but, lane three. But Dale did the right thing. He had come high, high, back to back shots. So he made a move, my guess is a, a three board move with his feet minimum, to try and maintain that one two and just got it a little wide. Great conversion. Spectacular spare there. Where Kyle Anderson cannot convert that same one three seven. Dale Geitz picks it up and gets himself out into the lead in this match for the first time since the third frame. Let's see what Dale can move here. Let's see what Dale can do here for a frame getting into the commercial break for this match. Well, this has been his better lane of the two. Nice smooth swing, kind of hit up on it a little bit and pays the price with a Two four. Yeah, not an easy spare on this tough flat condition. Saw a lot of bowlers during the match play portion of this tournament that would leave either two four or three six combinations on the right side. Slide past it, that front pin, and leave the two or three pin intact. Well, you don't want to chop it. 
and that was a pretty good conversion from the left side of the lane. That was a great spare. We're getting into our first commercial break of the day. Join us back here from Badger Bowl in Madison for the 2015 Master Badger Open in just a couple of minutes. Bowling Bucky here at Badger Bowl in Madison. Got him bowling on the sidewalls here. Next to lane one, we're on lanes three and four. We're gonna fast forward through next couple of frames. The bowlers keep going through the commercial break. Kyle Anderson a little high, leaving a six pin in his sixth frame. He has no problem going cross lane at that spare and picking it up. And then in Kyle's seventh frame, up that outside part of the lane, gets it to come in and slaps that seven pin out. Quality shot from Kyle, and now Dale's turn on the lane that's given him fits today and continues to give him fits as he carries the runaway. Yeah, he gets a big break blown out the 5-7 on the crossover. Gets himself out much better on that shot in the eighth frame, though, and puts a double up on the board to extend his lead. Yeah, Dale's looking good on that right lane, but that left lane is definitely posing some problems. Well, and the good news for Dale, at least, is that if he's got to step up to win the match, He's going to have his 10th frame on that right lane, so with the bowlers starting off a little different than what we usually see. Bowler had choice of lane and whether to start or finish the match in this first match. So Dale gets chose to start on lane three, finish on lane four, and finish ahead of his opponent, Kyle Anderson. That's a big shot right there. Matches Dale's double and stays in the match, but he's still down, if my math is correct, Seven pins. Seven pins? Okay, yeah. my, my math was not correct. I, I had it at nine. That's so. a great shot there. And uh, that's what these players do. Feel the lanes out, fine-tune their alignment on each lane, and now they got the double, and this is crunch time. Yeah, Kyle, two strikes and four attempts so far. He's gone <laughs> washout, and he left kind of a weak seven pin in the third frame, so... Wants to make sure he gets into the pocket this time. That's a little too far left. You can see that ball, a different cover stack, doesn't let it come back as much, Joey. Yeah, I think he's staying very aggressive on both lanes, and the right lane, I don't think he needs to. Because he's been, you know, it's been laboring a little bit down lane there, even though on the left lane it, come, it comes in flush. And uh, even though you're hooking into the pins, this isn't exactly an easy spare for a left-hander shooting at the 310. No, you still have to hit it just right. Gives a little extra on the bottom. Best way to cover it, both pins with the ball. Or as some say, both balls with the pin. <laughs> Nine pins is the difference after that spare. So Dale Getz can well, he step could, up and shut out he Kyle can, Anderson right, here. Exactly, that's exactly what I was gonna say. So he knows the ninth frame, this is big. A strike in the ninth and a strike on the first ball in the tenth would shut out Kyle Anderson. And a huge break there on lane three once again. Yeah, he is not liking that lane, but he'll take it. And that's three in a row, and that's with two crossover shots in that three bagger. And sometimes when the shot's tough, good breaks are part of this game, and sometimes you get a little more on a bad shot than your opponent does, and that can make the difference in a match. And no bowler wants to win that way. I'm sure Dale is you know, consternating that carry, but uh, he has to refocus things on his good lane. Much better out of the hand, rolls up, just a little weak, leaving that seven pin, and a spare here though, and good count will advance him into the championship match against our second semifinal yeah. winner that you'll see in the next match. I'll tell you, Dale was flush on this right lane, every shot but one when he came high and left the 2-4, but that left lane, I mean, has he hit the pocket on it? But no. Not yet. Not even one shot. He's got to be glad to be done with it. But the spare here is the big thing, and oh my. And that looked good for about 45 feet. And that is a huge opening, because now that lets Kyle Anderson go double and seven to win this match. And uh, you can see Kyle kind of jump up, not believing he just got that break from his opponent to step up and get a chance to win here. Yeah, you know, if that pin was 60 feet away, I think he would have made it. <laughs> but we know the back row pins are further away than the head pins. Another, about 63 feet another would be my guess. Feet. Yes, indeed. And it just dumped in the gutter. Yeah, it's 12 inches from pin spot to pin spot on the pin deck. Good shot by Kyle. 10 back. Can't throw it any better than that, Joey. Oh, wouldn't that be 62 feet then? 
It's the third row of pins. So from the head pin 60, the 2, 3 is 61, the 4, 5, 6 is 62, and your 7, 8, and 9 would be 63, pin, 63 feet away. True, the but, line. but they're not exactly directly behind the head pin. They're, they're at a 45 degree angle. It's 12 inches from spot to spot, though, regardless. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, we will... We'll have to disagree somebody. I'll have to do some measuring okay. next next time out. We'll take you down to the pin deck later on and we'll show you. We'll get you the close up down there. Well, I, you know, I've always heard it's 63, but the more I think about it, it may not be. This one, do you have a chance to advance? That Kicks is, at seven. That is the money shot. And I mean, Kyle's been in that situation probably more times than he cares to admit where he needs the double. And he really never gags. He always comes through. High school bowling, we've seen it. When he was at college, during collegiate tournaments, when he bowled for St. Ambrose. Last year we saw it in the Sean Yonan Collegiate Youth Finals. He had to strike, step up and strike the win, and he did it. Now, once again, to advance to a championship match. Yeah. And there are some bowlers that just love to rise to the occasion when it matters, and others that don't like to be in that situation. And that was obviously just a High, hard one at the head pin. Yeah, I needed seven, got them all. He's going to advance to the championship match. We'll be back with our second semifinal here from the Mass Badger Open at Badger Bowl in Madison in just a couple of minutes. Why do we have so many of our televised tournaments at Castle Lanes? Because we love being part of the wild side of bowling. If you're ready to get in touch with your wild side, go to castlelanes.com. Semi-final number two here at the 2015 Masked Badger Open Badger Bowl. Just off the belt line in Madison, the site. Riley Truel against Greg Hockmuth. And we've got Riley Truel, one of the older gentlemen we've had on our telecast over nine years here on Time Work Cable Sports Channel. 63 years young for Riley. Yeah, you're going to have to give us some uh, feedback on these players' games if you know more about them than I do. Not much. It's the first time I've seen Riley and Greg out on the lanes other than watching him during the semifinal match play rounds today. Uh, Greg can strap it up. Riley, conventional game. He's been bowling since he's 17. So lots of years on the lanes, and he's using an old Manhattan rubber for his spare ball, so we know Riley's been around a while right, throwing the ball. We know that ball's got some weight to it because not many players used, say, 14-pounders years back. They were all in the 16-pound range and a smattering of 15-pounders. Yeah. Where nowadays, most of the players out there are using 15-pound equipment for the men and 15 and 14 for the ladies. Rarely do you hear of a player other than the occasional Norm Duke or Missy Parkin throwing 16 pound equipment. Right. Greg Hackmuth out of South Point, Illinois, and we said Greg likes to strap it up a little bit. Well, now you know why. You can see exactly where Greg's starting here. Front of the ball return, keeping it tight. Yeah, but pretty clean through the release point. So when we say strapping it up, that doesn't mean that he hits up on the ball. It just means he has a high rev rate and Greg's got the modern day strap release, which is where they break the wrist down, or in other words, like a yo-yo, and roll it off those fingers. Let's see if we can catch it here from this view. It's so quick, it's not easy to see. Yeah, definitely see. Strong forward roll, like you mentioned, Joey, but this time leaves the three, six, nine, ten. Never projected that ball to the right at all. And sometimes that's the hard part when these bowlers are dealing with the ball returns with these unique angles that they get to play with these higher rev rates, higher ball speeds. Now, we've had two righties play this match. Both have come high on the left lane, similar to what we saw from both lefties in the last match. Not as much with Kyle, though, I should add. I almost should have had that. Yeah, just couldn't get that ball to hook back enough into the nine pin. Only takes the three, the six, and the ten, leaving him a 28 in the second. Riley Truel does a lot of fishing during the summer. His nickname is True Bass. Does fishes a lot of bass tournaments all throughout the Midwest. Very old school game, I guess you could say. Very short backswing, flips it through to get his revs and hand a little more to the side of the ball what's coming right. off. And didn't quite get enough back end motion on that shot. Appears to be using a stronger ball. I would venture to say, is that a Roto Grip Menace? That would be a, a Menace, that's correct. He's it using is a Roto Grip Menace. Strong core, 
reasonably strong cover, but not a ball that's going to flip too sharp on the back end, even though there he wished it flipped less. Yeah, both bowlers open in the second frame, leaves a two pin lead for Greg Hockmuth. I want to thank our friends at Action Heating and Cooling for sponsoring all the events that will be at Motion Plus Lanes again this season. The action Singles Shootout November 14th. That field is already starting to fill up. Make sure you get a hold of Kerry Catania at Motion Plus Lanes to get in on that. 414-481-0200, the number for Motion Plus. And there's a nice bounce back yeah, shot by Raleigh. Much, much better shot by Raleigh. And you can see he projected that ball slightly to the right and got it to make that corner down lane. But again, we'll see how he can fare on the right lane, which I think could pose some problems. Yeah, Raleigh controlling that back end a little bit differently than Greg. Greg Hockmuth using speed, where Raleigh doesn't have the big ball speed, but he's using more of a spin at the release to gather length on Raleigh's end. So Greg could be using a roto grip wrecker, kind of a skid flip hybrid, medium core strength. Uh, sinister, he's got oh, a sinister. Yeah. Blue and yellow, similar to the record. They look more pretty yeah. blue and oyster white. Yeah, they look pretty similar going down lane. Yeah, hard to tell unless you're right on top of that ball. But that's a ball similar to what Raleigh is using, but more of a pearl. Two thirds pearl, one third solid. Well, especially with the amount of boards that he's covering and a nice double there Boy. by Hockmuth. I mean, that's some pretty sweet <laughs> pin carry right there. And there's our defending champion from last year, Mass Tournament Director Kevin Thompson won here at Badger Bowl last year. Didn't make the top 16 this year, but he's got to, somebody's got to run the tournament all the way through the end, and that's one of, it's a little tough to run a tournament and bowl at the same time. How Kevin won it last year, that was pretty impressive. That's very tough. Let's see if he can get that double. He definitely yanked a little bit out, <laughs> out of the hand and carries a <laughs> runaway cross, which we have dubbed. The Steve Grabowski. Yes, indeed, where the head pin comes back off the wall and takes the five to the left, in this case, on the crossover. Watch that head pin do a lot of work, hits the six, and actually the six hits the five. Yeah, that could have been an ugly split. Nobody wants to shoot at a five, six, ten. And how often do you leave those nowadays? Uh, you, you probably shoot at that once every five years with bowlers of this caliber, as rarely as they make shots that are that bad. And that yeah. needs another break. And left off the hand, that's another crossover for a turkey. Well, we saw Dale Gates do that last game against Kyle Anderson to almost win. He put a couple of strikes into a three-bagger that were crossovers, but Kyle came through in the 10th frame with a big double to advance to the final. He's waiting to see who gets the bowl from the winner of this match. Yeah, and Greg knows that he better start striking here because his opponent's catching a few breaks and you don't want to be down 50 pins midway through the match. And that's just, that's where you see the oil pattern come into play. You can get it a couple of boards to the right and it never gets a chance to recover. And you know, Greg pretty consistent getting through to the TV show, beat Mike Hoffman. To a one to 190, and then Kyle Anderson, not the Kyle Anderson on the show, but another Kyle that lives in the Madison area, through a 200 game against Kyle Anderson from Madison. Both spell it S O N. Yes, indeed. They had to distinguish him on the leaderboards today with Kyle J for Kyle Anderson out of Illinois, who we'll see in the final match. And a nice cover there by Hockmuth. So they didn't put HP by the Kyle that will be in today's <laughs> final, the we human have, pretzel? We could have put that on there, I guess. So, and that's a nickname that's actually picked up. We, we post these shows on YouTube after they air on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel, and there's been a lot of people that have seen Kyle Anderson and a lot of our players, they, they watch the shows again on YouTube, and he's gone to college tournaments where they go, hey, human pretzel. You know, right. and, so. and Kyle knows there's no disrespect involved with us dubbing him the human pretzel. It's, it's nothing but affection for his game and, and Kyle's a great kid. Oh absolutely. He's got a great job. He works in downtown Chicago accounting for a real estate firm. He got a good job out of college. He's got an hour train ride and 20 minute walk each way to and from work every day. So uh, to keep the dedication going with bowling and a good job and, and getting himself established in the world, uh, a good kid. No doubt about it. Let's see what Greg Hockmuth can do here to make this 2-7 going into the commercial break. Picks it up perfectly. Keeps himself close in this match. Only down by 14 pins to Rally Trill. We'll be back with the rest of the second semifinal from Badge Bowl and Madison in just a moment.
Massonary Scratch Tour. You can get all the information about that tour on Facebook. Just look for Massonary Scratch Tour. They got a list of upcoming events on there. And we have the bowlers continue bowling through the commercial break to stay on time. Raleigh Trill looking for four in a row here, and that time he gets himself back in the pocket for a strike. Looking for five in a row, but that one doesn't quite care. I guess it's kind of payback for a crossover. But that was a good shot on his tougher lane. He made the adjustment. Converts the seven pin spare and maintains a healthy 20 some pin lead. Yeah. Greg Hockmuth, great shot on lane four where he's been pretty locked in. Leaves the same blower seven. A rally true left. No problem for Hockmuth covering up that spare. He steps up in the eighth frame. Misses far right, ball never comes back. Leaves the one, two, four, and a problem on the conversion. That's a correction, overcorrection you see often from bowlers. You well, miss right one shot, left on the next, and right. But on these tight patterns where they can sometimes hook a little more inside than outside, you see that because he may have made his two board move with his feet, and all of a sudden you don't get that launch angle to the right and the ball takes off and you miss that then rather easily. Yeah, and now a big lead for Riley Truel. Riley just needs to stay clean these last three frames and he should have no problem advancing to the championship match yeah, against Kyle Anderson. Riley knows he's got to hopefully put it in the pocket and he did not there and avoids the split. Big break for Riley on that shot. Started bowling when he was 17 years old so lots of years out on the lanes in the Madison area. Hometown DeForest, just outside of Madison. He's gonna switch to that Manhattan rubber to make that. Right, so he's a, four, a 46 year veteran. So he's seen all the changes. That Manhattan Robin, rubber when he started when he was 17 was probably a strike ball back in the day. Oh, without a doubt. That was a strike ball. But, black, black beauties, white dots. But the different lane surfaces, all the lanes were wood back then, and much less oil used on the lanes as we see Raleigh's road to the finals defeated the number one seed Chris Gibbons in the opening round. 191 to 176. Chris yeah. Gibbons can light him up. Chris Gibbons was plus 88 for four games on this pattern. The next bowler closest to him, plus one. So he had an 87 pin lead, but unfortunately the bracket caught up to Chris Gibbons and that's one of the old rules of bowling. Number one seeds only lose to number 16s, and in this case, for Rally Trill, he came through when he needed. He beat Chris Gibbons, won another match, and make his way to the TV show. And another problem with going high for Rally, and this 3610 is definitely not an easy spare. So, so that is back to back splits he's avoided. He uses the Manhattan and just misses that front pin, the three pin. And we saw that often today during qualifying and match play. Bowlers leaving those. 3-6 combinations for right-handers, 2-4 combinations for left-handers. Sliding behind that front pin with that extra oil they normally don't see on a lane condition with this long and flat pattern. Well, we see that in our Flat Earth League, bowling at Alpine lanes this year. And spare shooting takes its toll, and when you're shooting at seven or eight spares a game instead of three or four, you're gonna have misses. Absolutely. Good shot there. Oh wow, that one hooked really early. Almost got a huge break to take out the 6-9-10, but still leaves the 10 pin. And basically now for Greg Hockmuth, it's make this spare, strike out in the 10th, and that'll force Riley Truel to mark in the 10th. He really needed to get that first one to put a little extra pressure on Riley. Now for somebody with Greg's rev rate, he may have preferred those other two pins to be up there with that 10. Pretty hard and straight, and again, it falls just a little right, and that may have been a one-board error at the arrows, which turns into a three-board error down lane. Yeah, and you can see right there the dejection on Greg Hockmeet's face. He knows this match is over. Three strikes in the tenth only gets him a maximum score of 176. So Greg wanted to say hi to his wife, Christina. His two-year-old son, Nick, who's going to love watching the DVE show over and over again, even though Dad didn't do that well. His mom, Debbie, his dad, Mike. And another bowler who likes to fish during the off-season here with Greg Hockmuth. Well, fishing is a relaxing sport. Uh, I mean, it's very rewarding. Therapeutic, in fact. And, uh, even if you don't catch fish. Oh, uh, that's exactly it. And if you can get a couple of nice catches to put on the dinner table at night, that's even better, so... 155, definitely not the game Greg Hockmuth was looking for on TV, but 
I'm sure as this masked season goes along, he's going to make a few more finals. You can always catch those results of the mass tournaments on their Facebook page or their website. You can yeah. get links to that from their Facebook page. Yeah, I'm sure Raleigh may experiment a little bit here. He knows he will have his work cut out for him bowling against Kyle Anderson, who had no trouble hitting the pocket, and a good shot from Raleigh. Who's your early favorite then for the final? Kyle's been sitting the game, but nobody's been on the left side. And Raleigh's close to the pocket, and he's leaving himself makeable spares, and he's you know, he's close to 200 this game. Well, I'm more familiar with Kyle's game than Raleigh's, and Raleigh did not really master that left lane, uh, either with you know hitting the pocket or with pin carry, even though he's got the right lane pretty well down. I'd have to say Kyle by 30 pins. Well, this match is no longer in doubt. We're going to get to a commercial break here, and Joe Serrano will be back from Badger Bowl and Mass in the 2015 Mass Badger Open Finals coming up momentarily. Barbiere's Italian Inn, featured in onmilwaukee.com's In Search of the Perfect Pizza in January 2013. Near Miller Park on Blue Mound Road and on Milwaukee Avenue in South Milwaukee. Bowling fans, you waited all day for the championship match here from Badger Bowling Madison, the 2015 Badger Open presented by the Madison Area Scratch Tour. Raleigh Truel, the number 16 seed going into match play today. Kyle Anderson, the number 15 seed going in. And uh, facing each other in a championship match, Kyle Anderson and Lane Trace making Rowley Truel start things off. So, he, so, he, so Kyle chose the lanes, yet he's allowing his opponent to finish on his better of the two lanes, which is interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure. Kyle was back. He did a little warming up between the matches. He was back talking to a couple of his friends waiting for the match to start so I think maybe he just saw that Raleigh was just struggling with his release a little bit and just wants Raleigh to have the pressure on the 10th frame if he gets that far. Well that could be. And I think this has to easily be the widest age gap we've had in a match on television over the nine years we've been on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. 40 years the age difference between these two bowlers. Kyle yeah. Anderson just turned 23, Raleigh 63 years of age. Not a bad opening shot from both players. Yeah. They're both throwing it like seasoned veterans right now. Right back in the pocket for both of them. Ten in the pit for both of them. And uh, let's see what Kyle can do to get an early double up on the board. This is the lane he doubled in the tenth frame in his semifinal match to advance to this championship. And he chose to finish on this lane in the tenth frame. If the match is tight in that point, he just gave that one extra on the bottom. Well, if there is such a thing, because he, he puts <laughs> maximum effort into every release. So he gave that one 120% instead of his normal 100. Well, watch the ball just slice through. Yeah, very fortunate just to leave a single pin. I mean, that had 4 6 written all over it. Yeah, Kyle, a uh, hammer bowling staffer, one of the Ebonite brands. And the, actually, that shirt that Kyle's wearing today, he won that when he was 18 years old and when, when we were still the Hammer Youth Challenge Series for our youth bowlers. So uh, the shirts are holding up quite well for over the years, well, back in the Hammer days. And now uh, Kyle's kind of parlayed all his success from the TV shows into a staff contract with Hammer. So congratulations yeah. to him. Well-deserved and still fits him, which is nice. Yeah, absolutely. No freshman, no freshman 15 for Kyle Anderson. Well, I'll tell you, that shot from Raleigh there on the easier of the two lanes, it finished very, very strong, and he has an opening lead. I mean, I'm rooting for the super senior here, but yeah. my brain still tells me Kyle's going to get it done when the game matters. Well, if, Riley, if, if Raleigh here can get a three-bagger on the board, that would be huge because that's going to give him at least a 20-pin lead well, early again, in the he, match, and that could really keep the swing loose for him. Yeah, he struck in frame one here, but this lane we know is hooking more, and it, it didn't strike as authoritatively as the last one. That was real and, short on the follow-through. Yeah, that was left off his hand, and you know, when, when you're young, it's easier to stay down at the line. There's less tendency to pull it. 
and you know when you're up a little more erect at the line definitely not as easy to get it off your hand clean yeah if your timing's off just that hair all of a sudden the ball's coming through and you're upright it's just going to force it left there's no Makes shoulder it. turn or anything you can do to recover right. from that a good attempt at that split but that kind of brings the match more even. Yeah, puts Kyle in the lead by seven pins, assuming that Kyle gets a mark in this frame. Obviously, when we figure out the lead at a point in time in the game, it's assuming that the bowler is going to get a strike in the next frame. Right, which we always do. And <laughs> But he was high flush last time on this line. Always that interesting setup, just a little bit different than what you see out of people. Left handed, it's usually your left foot behind your right. He's opposite, but he's just made it work so well for so many years. Why change? I tried to count his steps there. I think it's six. Okay, I thought it was either four or five, but. Yeah, I think uh, that first step always throws me off. They as are well, pretty, well we, we have to count that step, even though it doesn't yep. travel forward, yep. it, it goes upward. So let's see if we can count it. Once again, that's up. Right foot behind the left, keeps that ball. A little more centered than you see with a lot of bowlers, and then he gets it out to the left with the swing. One, two, three, four. four. I think it's five. If he starts on his right and slides on his right, it's got to be five. We'll have to do that in slow-mo sometime and analyze the number of steps. Well, I mean, they are quick, and slow-mo is definitely going to be the answer. Yeah. But a big double right there, 17-pin lead for Kyle Anderson. Now, Raleigh's footwork we should be able to count rather easily because as we get older, we tend to walk slightly slower to the foul line. Yeah, he's, I believe, conventional four step here. One, two, three, four, mm -hmm. long slide. A long last step. And a great shot. Oh, I was going to say, doesn't get that two pin forward. <laughs> Is that a two pin or a four pin? Four pin. Four pin just barely gets out of there on that light hit. But again, that's his good lane. He, he's got control of the pocket there. That five pin goes behind the four pin and actually hits the back of it and knocks it over. <laughs> but it, it knocked it over where it didn't fall forward, it fell backward, which is unusual. Yeah. But he knows this is going to be the lane that's either going to win him the match or not. Came high last time on it. That's left again, Joey. That's way left. Uh, and it did not cross, so he leaves himself a rather challenging spare. And, uh... Kyler Anderson's got to be licking his chops sitting on the bench back there talking to his friends uh, Adam Keith and Dane Smith. Adam, we've seen several telecasts over the years, and Dane just got out of youth leagues and is bowling adult tournaments now. Came up to the mast event here with Adam and Kyle all carpooling together. Stays with his strike ball that time. Now, we saw him shoot his spare ball last well, game. But he, missed, behind he, it. he did miss the three pin right, and that one he almost missed it left, but he figured, why not? A big lead here for Kyle Anderson. 17 pins can stretch it out to 27 if he can strike here in the fifth frame. Well, Kyle's going to bear down. I mean, he's not taking Raleigh lightly. Because yeah. he saw the last match. He knows anything can happen. He needs to make as many good shots as he can and that gives himself a chance to win. It looks like Kyle moves slightly left oh, he, on the approach. And, and he liked that off his hand. He did a little fist bump there. Is that because of the, the, the bowling ball he's using, Joey? Because most of the time nowadays we see the lanes change, we see the bowlers moving inside. Kyle actually with his feet moved a little outside on well, that shot. Yeah, I mean, even though oil may move or dissipate from the, say, the last 20 feet of the pattern, the back end part of the lane is definitely creating with carry down. So, so he's seeing a tighter down lane, so he will move left. If he was using resin, he'd be moving right in most cases. Three in a row on the board, looking for four in a row, can get out to a 37 pin lead going into the commercial break. Gave that one a little bit too much again, and we saw it in frame number two going high. Yep. A big break to just leave the two four. It's the drier lane, it, 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 and it's what's strange is it's drier for both players. Yeah. Usually, uh, yeah, you see a lane hooking more for right-handers. It's usually hooking a little less for lefties. Right. So we know the topography of the lane. Maybe it's just a little bit more uphill for on both sides of the lane and slowing the ball down, letting it get into a little earlier friction. Right, and it's not an end pair, as we can see. It's lanes three and four. Hard and straight, makes that spare. He's probably glad to see those both fall. Absolutely. He keeps a big lead going in the commercial break for our championship match here. We'll be back with more from Badger Bowl in just a moment. Bowl and Bucky here at Badger Bowl. Fighting... All 10 pins down the lane here. It's going to get warm bowling in that sweater. 
no doubt weather's been so nice here in Wisconsin for September. Hopefully you have a nice fall all the way through and Rally Trill stepping up here in the sixth frame. It's been the warmest September in history in the Milwaukee area as of at least the 22nd. Yes indeed yes. and uh, how about that for Rally Trill? A big crossover gets the 6-10 out. It's got a lot of pins to make up in this match so he's still down 25 pins. Kyle Anderson, but if he can take advantage of tripping out that 6 9 10, next frame put a double on the board. He can cut that lead to 15. You see right there, it gives it the old finger guns. Got the crossover. A little facetiously, I'm sure, right, on that so case. He's got four frames left. He's going to need to make three great shots for sure. Nice and relaxed in that setup. Three shorter steps and that long slide. Got it right. Oh, how did that six lean against the 10 and not knock it over? Definitely one of his better shots on that lane. He's probably thought when he let that go, it's going to be all 10 down. I got a good chance of this match. And unfortunately, watch that six pin lean and just fall backwards off that 10 pin. He needed, square, he needed a square 10 pin and a square six pin in that case. And you need to tip it how many degrees? Seven and a half to get full knockover on a bowling pin. Yeah, I think rally was around five yeah. right there. Not quite far enough over, and Kyle Anderson's got to be thinking, I got things to my advantage right here, 25 pins, I'm making good shots, I just keep making good shots and things will happen. First place out here today, $541. Okay, Kyle, he knows to focus on each shot individually. Focus on the process, and that's the result. And a great shot there by Kyle. And uh, yeah, a big difference between first and second out here today. 541 for first, 341 Ooh. for second. So a $200 difference on the lanes. 541? Yeah, they have a formula they use here at the mass tournaments that calculates each part of the prize fund. It's a certain percentage of the entries that are taken in. Plus, uh, they do a bowling ball raffle every tournament to help raise some additional funds. And Harley Amon, good buddy of ours, won the bowling ball raffle here at Badger Bowl this time around. He said it made kind of a mediocre weekend a little bit better. I never so, have too many bowling balls, right, Harley? Yeah, no doubt about that for Harley. So, and that's the first real errant shot we've seen from Kyle Anderson in a while. Wide leaves the 1, 3, and 9. And uh, he's glad he's got that big lead going right now because this is no easy spare, especially he's going straight at it with that plastic ball. Which is risky, but when you're accurate, that lessens the risk. Yeah, and gets a drives that head pin out and gets it all the way back in the gutter. We'll have to get that out shortly. We'll get a remember the staff here at Badger Bowl down in just a moment. We'll let Rally bowl this frame here, keep the rhythm going. Rally down by a bunch, needs to start striking, no doubt about it. Had a good shot, or had that crossover last time on this lane. And that one, you can see the follow through not good at all. He kind of looped around it. Yeah, I think he tried to keep it on line with maybe possibly more speed. And uh, when you don't get a good release with that added speed, it does not hook. And he just leaves his version of what Kyle Anderson just left for Raleigh. It's the 1, 2, and 8. Yeah. Knowing Raleigh, he's going to definitely stay with that strike ball, try and hook it a little bit, cross over, cover all three pins with the ball. Well done. And not easy to do on this condition. We saw that out of Greg Hockmuth last match. Struggling with spares that were one, two combinations. Missing the head pin right on the first ball and left on the second. And as right. you said, a great cover there. But with Kyle Anderson up by 28 pins right now. Rally's maximum score is 210. And Kyle can just spare strike out to be the two teens. So Rally needs to start pushing, putting some pressure on right here in the ninth frame. Pretty solid at the line, but just a hair left. And yeah, that was a good shot. In fact, he's made better shots on this lane. Got tapped with the 10 pin last frame, and now a stone four pin. So I think he's happy with his execution this game, but I mean, Kyle just is executing a little better. Yeah, that big three in a row for Kyle in frames three, four, and five. That is the difference in the match right now. Kyle staying clean, Raleigh with that open frame in the third on the split. And no problem for Rally. Covering up that four pin. But right now, Kyle Anderson, he goes strike spare. 
He's in the 190s. Actually, he's in the two teens if he goes strikes. But Raleigh's maximum right now, 209. Okay, so let's count these steps, Phil. One, two, three, four, five. That's. <laughs> I don't, you can't count that. It's that shuffle step you, that fools you, so me. So you're counting that trail leg as yeah. a step, and it's actually it's five. four. You think it's four? I still I think it's four because I think you get the fifth step from his right foot being a, a shuffle step. I'll tell you what, he shuffled that seven pin out of there, though, with the head pin. No I doubt mean, about he's it. I mean, he's fun to watch. But oh, yeah. I mean. I'll have to ask him after this is done how many steps he thinks he takes. Knowing Kyle, <laughs> he will say, I don't know. No. <laughs> If whatever feels right. I mean, he's an intelligent young kid who oh, yeah. probably doesn't worry about it because he does it the same every time. Yeah, it's that, it's that shuffle step. But you see that out of a lot of two-handed players. They do the quick stuff with shuffle step. Jason Belmonte, prime example of that. Right. And uh, it's, it's kind of hard to follow that shuffle step it sometimes. And, and we can just see the cadence in his footwork being so much quicker than Raleigh's, and that's where a lot of that ball speed comes from. Oh, I mean, he generates momentum right there, and then he obviously has a faster downswing speed. Well, that spare right there is your winner. Stay behind the foul line, Kyle Anderson, and you're taking home that $541 for the 2015 Mast Badger Open Championship. It'll be his first Mast title. I'm sure there'll be many more to come. I'm sure he'll be making the trip with a lot of his friends from the Chicagoland area and bowling more of these Mast tournaments. Especially as more of their house, more of their patterns that they're using in tournaments are not house patterns. They're getting away from that. They're getting into more tournament challenging type patterns. There's a lot of bowlers out there that we know that take advantage of tournaments such as that. Tony Oliva and Harley Am and bowlers in the Milwaukee area that we saw out here for the mass tournaments. Now we'll see Raleigh's footwork being so much slower in cadence. And that probably prevents him from throwing it three more miles an hour faster, such as Kyle, but a great shot. I mean, Raleigh could have won this game. He just had a little bit of bad luck with pin carry on that left lane, which we knew was the tougher of the two. The right lane, I mean, you can't throw it any better than that. No, nope, not at all, so. Well, this match no longer in doubt. We're gonna save a little time. We'll get back to wrap things up here from Badge Bolt, myself, and Joe Serrar. So, enjoy the last shot here from Raleigh Trill. We'll be back momentarily from Badge Bowl in Madison. Why do we have so many of our televised tournaments at Castle Lanes? Because we love being part of the wild side of bowling. If you're ready to get in touch with your wild side, go to castlelanes.com. Providing premier equipment sales and services to Wisconsin bowlers since 1973. Check out our wall of fame and our current specials at bpsmilwaukee.com. Eileen's Bowling Buddy, used by high school and college coaches and members of the PBA Tour to train, warm up, and rehab. Get all the information at EileensBowlingBuddy.com. Well, Joe, we knew the scores were not going to be high on the telecast today. We know it was going to be a battle to get that 2015 Masked Badger Open title. And uh, Kyle Anderson did it the right way. Just kept filling frames. Only one open frame for him all day. Yeah, he filled frames. He caught that early turkey in the match. And uh, as good as Raleigh bowled, he bowled much better in the final match. He just couldn't quite carry as well as Kyle did. Kyle Anderson with his first mass title. I'm sure there's going to be many more for him. If you want more information on the mass tournaments, just find Madison Area Scratch Tour. Find that on Facebook. They also have a website that links from their Facebook page. You can check out all the results for the over almost 30 years of tournaments they've had out in the Madison area. More great bowling coming up on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. Joe Serrar will be with me back on the call for those events. So for my friend Joe Serrar, always see him at Bowler's Pro Shop for your bowling needs. I'm Phil Brilo. Parents, take the kids bowling. love fun for life. And we'll see you again on our next show.